Hi guys and welcome back to our next video. Now here it's me back again with another video about uh, how can we install the Android emulator and now basically uh, we are not installing the emulator, we are uh, installing Android as a virtual machine. So basically now we are going to learn how to install Android as a virtual machine using VMware Workstation and of course you can use VBox as well, I mean VirtualBox uh, you can use any virtual software, virtualization software you want to basically make your work more simple and so on. Uh, depends on what uh, you are getting used to more. And uh, yeah, so just use the virtualization software that you are most comfortable with. So now, uh, why we're doing that? Because as we said, uh, sometimes you're going to need like uh, a lot of tools for the same thing. And uh, by basically having multiple instances of Android, we can... Uh, choose from what to go for. For example, if your uh, hardware is basically not supporting virtualization or you have not enough RAM, you can of course go with the emulator one, which is kind of lighter, but it still requires a lot of RAM memory and a lot of CPU. But in, on the other hand, if your machine is like uh, strong enough, you can simply go for the virtual machine because like it's more realistic you can there connect to wireless networks, uh, you can go on and uh, and just, it's like a, a real tablet or real phone. When we have in the emulator, we are connected to some uh, simulated network. Yes, we have internet access. Yes, we can hack it because uh, getting a reverse shell requires just a connection. But uh, if we want to go for more advanced stuff, it's always better to go for virtual machine because we have all the functionality needed and so on. So basically, depending on your hardware requirements, you can either choose for going on virtual machine or using VMware or virtual, uh, virtual box, sorry, or uh, go for emulator. There are many multiple online, like the one we've chosen before was Mimu, but uh, there are really a lot of Android emulators like Boostack and, and so on. Uh, so keep in mind that not all the, the emulators can do the job for you because uh, some of the emulators are specially designed just for apps and some of them are designed just for games. So if you manage to download an Android emulator for games, you can only play games in that uh, software with that emulator, so uh, the hack is not going to work whatsoever. So you basically need some kind of emulator like Mimu where you can uh, basically perform standard functions like uh, downloading new app, uh, basically having a connection to the internet and uh, like acting as a normal machine and so on. So now this is my, my main machine, Windows 10 and now that's just open edge or any browser you want. I'm using edge for that series. Now we get to like uh, google.com. Now uh, not in here and now uh, Let's go and, and search for Android ISO download. Now we can go for, for Android uh, 86 and now uh, click here we should get to, uh, with the, all of Android issues right there. So basically now in my case I've tried a lot of them and I've designed that, i figured out that uh, the one that worked for me good is like the other version of Android, Android 4. And uh, most of Androids running uh, 8.1 are not comfortable with my uh, VMware installation. So basically, they are uh, doing some kind of conflict and they do not work how, how it's ex expected to work. So basically, we can uh, either go here and just download like uh, the one for ThinkPad or just uh, the Tegaf one and so on. So let's go and download that. Now it's go I'm going to be redirected. Uh, if I, if the download does start automatically, just click that uh, link right here and it should start. So I click save. Now the Android emulator is downloading and this is just the ISO file from where we can burn the image and we can install it as a real machine and so on. So keep in mind that you can install Android as a real machine, not, not, not as a virtual one or as an emulator. Like if you burn the ISO using Rufus or uh, other software for burning into flash memory so you can burn it into some kind of a DVD disk and so on, you can basically install it as a main machine uh, and like uh, operate. You can even make dual, triple boot with uh, Windows, Linux and so on. Because as we said before, Android is just Linux based and everything can be done with Linux, can be done with Android as well, like uh, on most of things. So basically, you can install it as a machine, you can make a double or triple boot and so on. 
So if you want that, you can uh, you can just go for it. There are plenty of tutorials. How can you implement that? How can you boot uh, actually burn into a flash drive and so on? So our download is now ready. We can uh, open the folder. Now I can uh, cut that. Go to Virtual Machines folder and therefore click uh, New and create folder Android. Go there, paste the ICE file and. Uh, Keep in mind that the paste operation is a lot faster than the copy one. So uh, if you want to move file quicker and you want to basically cut it, if you don't need two, two same files on two different directions, you can use cut, it's really the fastest operation right there. So uh, we can open VMware workstation right now, go to file, go to uh, new virtual machine. And now we can go for typical one. Uh, now select the ISO file we want to drain information. So basically to burn, which is in the virtual machine. Now Android, specify the file. Okay, amazing. Now we should go for next. It's automatically detected free BSD because that's the platform based on the Android is based on that that version of Android. So you can go now and change that to Android because we don't want our virtual machine to be called free BSD like in, in here in the pro, in the explorer bar. So we can now browse the directory where the virtual machine is going to get installed. So in Android, of course, in the same directory. So next. Now here we can either go for 20 or 30 gigabytes, because, but it's just uh, quite enough if we go for 20 gigabytes. Of course, that is always good practice when you have more, uh, more capacity, more memory. But uh, of course, uh, 20 gigabytes are plenty enough for that Android where Put in there so click next and of course uh, the splitting option I always go for it in the default is basically uh, selected and the splitting option basically uh, splits the files basically the hard drive files into multiple different files like uh, when you go for the first option all the files that have generated all the hard drive file is just one huge file like in 20 gigabytes but when we have uh, the split option there will be many generated files and uh, VMware Workstation knows how to collect the files, how to uh, combine them in order to arrange the disk space and to run your virtual machine. And this option is basically recommended because it's faster, it's safer and it's better when you're basically moving your operational system. So uh, having the one huge file is like more heavy and the process is like more complicated since uh, it, and it's not that secured. Since let's say you can basically somehow pull it out uh, while, while transferring or uh, something happens with your hardware and so on, basically the splitting files are more secure to us since uh, they are transferred more easily and uh, they just know how to combine, it's more fast and so on. So basically we can go for split virtual disk into multiple files, so click next. Now here we can customize our hardware. So basically with that Android, we are basically running tablet. So here uh, I, wa I want to go for one gigabyte. I think it's enough. Now processor one one is just plenty enough. We can, uh, we don't touch here. We already configured that. Therefore our network adapter, we use bridged one. So we have internet access. Now USB controller, sound card and display are basically untouched since we don't want to change anything whatsoever so click close and now finish and now uh, this should boot up our android device right here and now we can go for installation install android to hard disk so go for that if you want you can of course go for wife one and see how your machine manages and how it performs during the operation of such device or such an operational system so basically you can decide either to install it or not as a real or virtual machine. So basically, if, if uh, some, some machine is running bad while it's in live mode, there is guaranteed chance that it's gonna run bad while it's in real mode. So when you install the machine and run the machine from the installation you've made, the performance is gonna be the same. Wow, uh, so, so the difference is basically, while running a live USB live operational system like Linux Wife, like Kali Wife, Android Wife, you are using uh, the same amount of RAM memory, but uh, you cannot save files because they're going to be erased. We don't work with the disk capacity, of course, you can transfer them manually. But for example, if you do some updates 
if you somehow uh, manage and support and uh, edit your operational system like you change some settings they won't be saved because anytime you boot the system from wife usb or wife instance it's going to be loaded with the default values because they are hard, hard coded there and so far if we basically generate some files if you want to save the files we should mount our real file system and transfer the files there which is kind of bad and not practical so uh, the wife usb the wife operational system overall is for testing where you can test uh, how your pc can behave with such operational system and uh, it's basically designed for you to, to to decide either to install it or not so let's begin to android uh, we know we want to install the, the android so click uh, c for activate and okay now uh, we have all the available disk space right there. Now I'm going to create new with only one gigabyte. So basically, it's saying create new partition uh, in size primary, in size in megabytes. So uh, 124. Uh, this is one gigabyte. Okay. In the beginning, of course. And now I'm going to make that uh, bootable so with enter command. Now with the down error, I can specify the empty space because one gigabyte is not enough to install the operational system. So uh, I'm going to select the empty space. Now with the right arrow, I'm going to navigate new, therefore enter, and now primary, of course. Now by the default, it's going to specify uh, the left free space. So I'm not going to need to touch anything right here. So click enter. And now uh, we can go to type. I can specify 83, which is Linux. So 83, 83. And now I have go for write. And now I type yes with words. And now click enter. And keep in mind that, uh, as you can see here, the S is not visible, but it's there. So do not worry. Type yes, and uh, just run enter. So yes, type it as it is. The S is outside, but it is there. So if you type yes, it's not going to basically install. So uh, yeah, just yes and enter. So it's now writing partition table to disk and basically now we are installing the operational system itself. Now uh, we need to quit that because we've edited the partitions. And now we should select where to install basically and by selecting the second one because the first we made it boot. And the second one is the, our uh, most of the empty space, the free space. So here I just go for enter and x3 this is the file system and basically what the file system is is basically uh, how the operational system arranges files so basically there are files the files are located in the hard drive and and with the file system which for example is x3 the operational system knows uh, where are the files and it knows how to operate with them because imagine files is just the sectors in a hard drive like uh, one huge file would be that sector from that sector one small file will, would have more sectors arranged but still gonna have some sectors and so on so basically that's how the files are structured in sectors so from that sector to that we have that file we have that memory arranged we have that capacity stored right there and so on so basically imagine a huge pattern of sectors and uh, different parts of them are arranged from different files and uh, using the file system the operation system knows how to arrange that files how to edit that files move copy paste cut and so on so without the file system none of this would be possible and uh, there are different type of file system each one with uh, spe specifics about it uh, the ntfs one is mainly used in windows while uh, x3 x4 x2 and so on is mainly used in linux but the one uh, the one thing that I like in Linux the most is that uh, you can basically say that I want from that sector to that to be like uh, X4 and I want from that sector to that to be like NTFS and so on. So, so in Linux you can basically mount and use different uh, file systems which is great. Like uh, just, j j just either you say I want that to be NTFS, I want that part to be X4, I want that part to be X3 so you can properly use the specific functionality to any file system so uh, while you get into that advanced level you can go uh, search for the specification about the file system and therefore uh, you can manipulate and use that file systems once like all in once so now let's bring it to our installation now we've selected X3, click enter and now you choose to format 
the CDA2, which means our partition guy there, to X3, all that in that partition will be walls. Are you ready? Yes, I am. And now it's gonna format the partition, and now it's going to install the Android. So do you want group? Of course you want group, and group is basically uh, whenever the Linux boots, it goes to the like the MBR and therefore uh, it goes to the group. Like uh, the Linux boot process is complicated and it's separated in different multiple steps. And uh, the one of the steps is a group boot order. So the group one is uh, just a file and keep in mind that in Linux, the, and just including Android of course, everything is files. So we have files for files, we have files for drivers, we have files for directories. Directories are files themselves that can con collect additional files. Like you can open directory with Vim and so on and see how it's structured. And you're gonna see uh, text understandable text, not just any binary symbols right there. So we have files for anything and uh, we have files for drivers and we have files for group order. And group basically is that too when uh, when booted, before actually booting the operational system, it asks you for uh, which operational system to boot. And uh, you may ask why Linux basically asks us when we want to install only that. Like when we, when we're installing some other operational systems like uh, Windows, uh, there would be logical to, to be asked for a group. But when we're installing the only Linux, why we are even asked for a group? Well, because uh, simply, when we are installing Linux, it comes with different modes of basically running. We can go for mode in uh, safe mode, power, uh, advanced modes, memory checks, and so on. So basically, group while installing only Linux is basically asked because it can uh, provide us with such modules. Modules. So whenever we boot the next time, I'm gonna reboot that machine. You're gonna see that we have modes for a mem check and, and advanced options and so on. So basically, these are more for uh, sysadmins oriented. When we have some problem to diagnose, when we need to run some mem checks and so on. But uh, throughout the group, they are accessible, and throughout the group, they can be used. So that's why the group is asked to be installed. And uh, the next advantage of group is that when you, for example, install a new operational system and you update the group configuration, it's gonna uh, automatically find the operational system and if, it and if it has any troubles, you're gonna be asked on what partition is in installed. And uh, whenever it finds the operational system, it's gonna update itself and uh, therefore you can use the both operational system or the three or four times how many you've installed. And keep in mind that while we're starting Windows after Linux, it's kind of more complicated. You need to add records and so on. But uh, now the topic is not that because it's a really huge topic and, uh, and hard. So there are plenty of tutorials out there. So if you want to work how it's done and you are interested, you can go free and watch all the videos. So now click uh, yes here for group installation. And now uh, do you want to install system directory as a read write? Basically, what read write means is that we can uh, read and write and not only read because in system directory we may have a chance of only reading and that means we won't be able to write any changes but by installing read write we can basically change, install, modify, create files and so on. So that means we are writing something to a disk. Reading is like when we are when the information is there, we are not touching the information, but we are extracting that information. Like we can see that file, we can see what's inside, we can see the picture, we can uh, basically see anything there. That's a read. And what is count as write is basically when you are changing something. When you are uh, so remember when I said that everything is structured in the hard drive as sectors. So when you write there, the sectors are changed. Like when you cut when you copy, when uh, you create, when you delete, so on. The sectors there are changed and that means right. So now click yes. And our operational system now is gonna get installed and keep in mind that it's really easy and fast because and it is, as I said, white uh, distribution. And of course we've downloaded uh, like the previous versions. So uh, it's gonna be even faster so we don't have to worry about nothing. And keep in mind that the hacking in and the getting the web show of Android device is quite the same for any version of Android, so we don't have to worry about nothing. Now I think we are ready to go. 
and uh, we should get prompted with yeah so we are prompted now with an android uh, 86 x86 or reboot if you want you can direct even the, the android x86 but uh, i always recommend to go for a reboot one since uh, basically we want to to stop reading for a second and, uh, and then relaunch the operational system now here if you are installing android as a main machine now is the time to basically unplug your flash drive so here unplug the flash drive and click reboot i always recommend to go for the reboot option so now here this is the group folder that i was mentioned about and now here as you can see we've just installed android but we have uh, debug mode so here there are more options of like uh, system or uh, system administration oriented like some checks and diagnostics but uh, we are not in, we are not into that so uh, we don't have to worry about that and here if we actually install uh, another android and we configure the group we update the group it's gonna appear here so now uh, click enter and now we should boot the android detecting android found and now we have the logo now we should get the yeah the logo right here and the system is now booting up keep in mind that the first time you boot it can be slower than expected and than usual but uh and also should get asks for uh like a gmail like a username some credentials some usernames about how the machine is going to represent itself to the network and so on so now that's why it's lower and i'm sure that we need to do some configurations about it yeah so that's the android you see now it's pretty old so uh, we can choose language here here go for start wait a little bit now it should be get asked for a uh, username and so on or gmail one but we won't be using gmail and uh, we don't need gmail basically for hacking all the apps that uh, can be installed from uh, google play can be installed from the official websites so basically click next now make it google not now uh allow google no do not allow and of course if you want you can go and click that basically for locations now click next and now we have to choose our name we can use either this keyboard or we can type with our own is no we can't okay so we have to use that so yep next okay i think we're ready now nice now this is the base candle it we have we have some camera we have some uh diary right here yeah this our uh no not that these are uh the, the options for getting back and uh, viewing the home page the root page and uh, all the apps so basically you see we have uh working android right there and it's working pretty well we have the apps right here we have all the apps like okay yeah so uh this is what i was talking about okay guys so this is how you can basically install android on a virtual machine you can of course uh, use VirtualBox or vmware workstation in order to install that virtual machine you can modify the hardware parameters right there and now we are basically ready to go and start hacking so uh i really appreciate for watching i really i will really be actually happy that if you if you managed to understand what i was explaining about the file systems and the operational systems like the overall knowledge and now we are going to move forward into hacking the android device we're going to use the emulator one but of course it does not really matter which one you are using so uh, i really appreciate you guys for watching and see you in the next video